All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Rafat. I'm a systems architect here at Cisco. I've been with Cisco for about uh, 11 years now, based out of San Jose, California. Today, I'll be talking about how you can do automatic WebEx bot deployment using Alexa skills. So before I get started, I just want to do a quick 60-second intro of what we'll try to cover here in the session today. I want you to imagine this. Let's say there are a couple of developers out there. We'll call them Bob and Alice. Uh, both of them, they have a brilliant idea where they want to develop an application, something that can help automate the tasks for their end users of their organization. So thus starts their journey. At some point, Bob and Alice like, would need to sit down, make sure they write the code. They test it locally, build it all together, and then deploy it. So at the deployment stage, they will have to hand this off to the operations team, because the operations team would then be responsible to make sure that they can host this code in a safe and secure environment. So this journey of the application from the development phase right to the point where it actually goes live GA and end users can access it, that's basically what we'll be covering in the session today. And in case you haven't guessed, the application that we'll be looking at is a web export. So in the agenda, we'll first look at why is it that I've decided to use DevOps for this specific workflow? We'll look at all the different components for the DevOps workflow that are involved for this. Uh, we'll then look at the end-to-end -end deployment lifecycle, what it would look like. And then finally, we'll jump into the demo. So to start off, uh, why is it that we've decided to use DevOps? Now, going back a little bit, the intro that I gave you, you would have realized there were two key stakeholders involved, right? There was the development team, and then there was your operations team. Both of these teams usually work towards different incentives. Uh, the development team is tasked with rolling out new features as soon as possible. The operations teams, on the other hand, is tasked with making sure that they can have a stable environment, right? So in any case, you'll always have this scenario where after your bot or your application is deployed, it's live there's going to be feedback coming in from the end user community. So they might want like more features, or maybe there's a new bug that they've uh, identified in your production code. Or let's say maybe there's a new security vulnerability out there that requires patching. All of these scenarios, the end result is going to be, it's going to need some code changes into your application, right? So how do you bring these two teams together? That's basically where DevOps comes into play, right? It, it makes sure you have like a closed loop between your development and your operations team. And using CI, CD, we can make sure that any code that gets deployed is easily integrated into your production, UAT, or your test environment. So that's basically what DevOps will help achieve over here. So then what are all the different components for the DevOps that we'll be looking at over here? The first one is we are going to be using Alexa Skills Kit. So what is Alexa Skills Kit and why are we deciding to use it? You'd kind of imagine like a typical dev developer environment would consist of like using different CLI tools or maybe different steps in the GUI to be able to deploy something. Now all of these are like complex things. So using Alexa skills, basically what we do is we're going to use Alexa, but make it listen to our custom voice commands. So we remove all the complexities that are involved by going into a CLI, typing a command, or like navigating through different GUIs. All of that goes away. Using a single voice command, every single thing that you see going forward will be automated. So what is that voice command then? It's going to be something very similar to like Alexa, ask Cisco Live. So Cisco Live is the invocation name over here. You're free to choose any other invocation name of your choice. And then finally, what is the intent that you want Alexa to do? So the intent over here is that I want Alexa to deploy my bot. Again, this part of the equation is also pretty customizable, so you can choose any specific utterance or intent of your choice. So OK, now Alexa has all the inputs that it needs. What does it do then? It goes ahead and triggers a AWS Lambda function. What is AWS Lambda function? It's basically like a serverless function that will help you manage your compute resources without you having to bother about the underlying infrastructure. So Alexa triggers AWS Lambda. Lambda makes sure that you have all the underlying infrastructure ready to go. Lambda will also make sure that it gives you some sort of a feedback back to Alexa so that Alexa knows whether your code ran successfully or whether it ran into some sort of an issue. OK, so now Lambda has got the request. Lambda, in turn, goes ahead and triggers a CI-CD pipeline. So for the CI-CD pipeline, we are using CircleCI. 
Again, all of this is highly customizable. So if you have another tool in your environment that you're using for CI CD pipeline management, like maybe Jenkins, you can continue using that. It's just that for, for my project area, I've decided to use CI CD. Uh, I've decided to use Circle CI. So what is Circle CI going to do? It'll help fetch the code from somewhere. Before it can fetch the code, I need to define my code. So for that, I head over to developer.webex.com, create a bot. Creating the bot will generate an access token. That's the token that I'll save, because this is the token that will be used for all of my other integrations. Now, what is the bot actually based on? It's using the botkit framework based on JavaScript. So you're free to choose any other programming language of your choice. So using the botkit framework, we're going to have our bot do certain tasks. For the demo over here, we're going to focus on three main use cases. I'll have the bot use uh, WebEx REST APIs. So I'll just show you one of the use case, but that doesn't mean you're limited to that, just that use case. You're free to use any REST APIs for WebEx that are out there. The other use case is like APIs that are accessible over the internet. So any use case where like you want to get the weather or the temperature and things like that, random APIs that are accessible over the internet, you can have that integrated with your bot. And then the, for the third use case, maybe you have an enterprise system that has its own APIs, so you can integrate your bot with that as well. Right? So think of like use cases where you have Salesforce or maybe a cloud DLP that you want to integrate to. Right? So those are the integrations that the bot can work with. OK, so now you have the code defined for your bot, but that code needs to recite somewhere. For that, we're going to be using GitHub, pretty standard. GitHub acts as our version control and code change repository. It also helps make sure that all the developers that are spread geographically across different regions can collaborate together. So now I have all my code ready to go, defined in the GitHub repository. Circle CI is able to trigger the pipeline. What is it going to do next? It will go ahead and dockerize that and then deploy it. So that brings us to the next step where we're going to use a Docker container. There are two key benefits of using Docker container over here. First one is that all the required binaries required for the code execution are now packaged in the single Docker container. Second, I don't have to worry about the underlying OS because my container will take care of that. The other use case where I find this very beneficial is it makes the execution time really, really fast. And you'll see that when I jump into the demo. In all of my dry runs, it's been like about one minute, 10 seconds, one minute, 15 seconds. So that's as quick as like you need a change, you make the change, and within a minute, it's deployed live in your UAT test or your production environment. The final step remaining is where you now have to deploy this on a web server. So this, for this, I'm using Heroku. Um, you can use any other web server. You could use it like maybe a local NGROC running on your laptop, any of that. So at this point, once your code is deployed on the web server, it's live. That means any user who has access to the WebEx app can now go ahead on their desktop, on their mobile, and can use your WebEx bot. So I know like probably some of the terms that I mentioned over here might be new for some of you. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to tie this all back together, show you what that end-to-end -end flow would look like. So we have a developer over here who goes to Alexa and gives it the voice command of, Alexa asks Cisco Live to deploy my bot. At this time, Alexa goes in and triggers the AWS Lambda function. AWS Lambda will give some sort of a feedback, whether the code ran successfully or whether it ran any issues. Assuming the code ran successfully, it's going to go ahead and trigger our Circle CI pipeline. The Circle CI pipeline will need to fetch the code, which is already defined. It gets it from the GitHub repository. It will dockerize that in a Docker container. And then finally, you have it deployed on your Heroku web server. Now any end user on their WebEx app can access your bot. Right, so that's, now, if you look at the overall life cycle, it sounds too complex. But just think of it, right? The only thing that your admin had to do was just use that one voice command. And all of this, everything else in between was fully automated. Now, everything that I've said, hopefully that works. So let's switch over to the demo. All right, so in my first tab, what I have over here is basically Alexa's developer console. I could have used a physical Alexa device. I choose not to because it's just easier this way, right? Like if you have a laptop that can access the dev portal, you can simply access Alexa from here. So I'm going to give it the voice command, and let's see if it's actually able to execute that task. Yeah. 
Your WebEx bot was launched. Please make sure you take a look. Thanks. Great. So that worked. Now let's take a look under the hood what really happened over there when I gave it the command. So I'm going to go to the build section. And under here, you'll find that I have multiple things listed. The first thing that we'll try to look at is basically the invocation name that I had to use. So right here under invocation, you'll find there's an option for skill invocations. This is the name that I used when I said Alexa asks Cisco Live. This is where it's coming from. So I could have chosen any other invocation name of my choice. The second half of the equation, which was the intent that I, what I wanted Alexa to do, is coming from the interaction model. Under interaction model, I have several intents defined. The intent that we're going to be looking at over here is the deployment intent. Within this, I have several utterances, four to be more specific. So I could have given Alexa any of these commands. Like I chose to give it deploy my bot, but I could have said deploy the bot, deploy the project, deploy project deployment. Any of these keywords would still have triggered the same workflow. OK, so now Alexa got the full command. How does it know that it has to go ahead and trigger the AWS Lambda function? For that, I simply go to the endpoint section. And you'll see here I have to define my AWS Lambda ARN. So the AWS Lambda ARN comes from the other portal where I've logged into the Lambda, uh, AWS Lambda portal where I've defined my function. As soon as I define the function, it will generate an ARN, which is going to be unique to that function. So this specific function, ARN, which ends with 5693, that's basically the one that we are using right here. So this is where I get the ARN from. And now you can kind of see visually as well, right? The input to my function was coming through Alexa. So that's how the Lambda function gets invoked. Now what's the output? So that's actually defined here in my JavaScript code. So you'll see that the URL for the output points to my circle CI, CI, CD pipeline. So that's how Lambda knows in turn that it needs to go ahead and trigger my CI, CD pipeline. OK, remember the response that we got back from Alexa when I gave it the command that your WebEx bot was launched. Please make sure you take a look. That response comes right here. Uh, your WebEx bot was launched. Please make sure you take a look. So I could have typed any text over here, and you guys would have listened to that response. If something would have went wrong, we would have listened to this message played across. Please check your build log. Something went wrong. So that's how you have some sort of feedback mechanism, and you know whether your code ran successfully or not. OK, so now comes the main part. Like, Let's look at our CI CD pipeline. You can see it's been three minutes since I gave that command. So it took three minutes ago is when our pipeline ran, and it took about 1 minute 21 seconds. In my previous runs, you could see like it ran about 1 minute 14 seconds. So that's how quick the build was able to run. Now, for the build to run, it needed the code. So the code was mentioned over here. Like, I just go to developer.webex.com, define my WebEx bot, generate an access token, pass that access token into my GitHub repository in the environment variable file. I'm not going to show that token, but it's there. OK, you just have to trust me. Um, the steps that Circle CI took is actually defined in my YAML file. So going into the GitHub repository, I can open up my YAML file, and you'll see that these are all the steps that are required in my uh, Circle CI pipeline to run. So it had steps like checkout, restoring the cache, build a Docker image, push to Docker Hub, deploy to Heroku. Now, how do we know whether Circle CI actually did all of those? So this last build that it ran, let's take a look at that. I can open this build. Um, it's build number 417. When I click into it, you'll see that it actually did all of that. Check out the code, restoring the cache, push to Docker Hub, deploy to Heroku. All of these show with a green check mark. That means the build ran successful. OK, so then we are pre getting pretty close, right? Like This is where we are now going into our Heroku dashboard. This is the web server. Let's take a look if our web server is up and running. So over here, I'm going to click on Open App. And like I said, our WebEx bot is actually built on the BotKit framework. So it shows the BotKit framework is up, web server is up. That means at this point, my app is fully accessible. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my WebEx app and look if my bot is live. So this is the WebEx bot that I'm using. For the first use case, like I said, we're going to focus on the WebEx REST API use cases. Um, so let's say uh, I'm going to ask my bot to create a room. So when I give it this command, I expect it to create a new room, add me as a participant in that room. So that looks like it worked. Uh, this is the new room. It added me as a participant, and it's asking me a question. 
I'm going to have to respond. So just keep in mind, every time you're in a room with the WebEx bot, not in a one-to-one -one space, you have to tag the bot before you respond with anything. So I'm going to tag the bot and say, sounds good. And let's see if it responds back. So OK, that worked. Right? So this is just one of the use cases where I've used the WebEx REST API to create a room. You could do like adaptive cards, a poll, or whatever you want. As long as there's a WebEx REST API available, your bot can go and trigger that workflow. All right, for the next uh, use case, which like any random API that's accessible over the internet, let's see if our bot is funny. So I'm going to ask it to tell me a joke. So this is just an API that's available over the internet, which I'm invoking over here. And that works, right? So it's still funny. It's still able to tell me a joke. For the third use case, what I want to show you is like how we can integrate any enterprise uh, system that you have with your, with your bot. So for that, what I'm using over here is I have Thousand Eyes integration with my WebEx bot. So Thousand Eyes, if you guys don't know, is basically used for monitoring your traffic. It could monitor any sort of traffic. Uh, for my use case, I'm going to be using um, the bot to monitor WebEx traffic. So any alerts that get generated in the Thousand Eyes portal, it will be passed to the bot, and the bot will make sure that it posts that in the space. So I have created a separate space over here. And in this space, I've added bot as a participant. So all I need to do is just go into my Thousand Eyes portal. Hopefully, I'm still logged in. OK, going into the integration section, this is basically where I've created the WebEx integration with my bot. So going into Alexa, I can actually go ahead and trigger a test alert, a test message. So that worked as well, right? So you can see that right here in this space, it was able to generate. So again, I think the use cases that I'm trying to show are not like hard-coded or just limited to these three. If you had, so last year when we did this talk, we actually had an integration available with a third party DLP. So if I was actually going to send any sensitive information in a chat message, it would catch that and it would trigger the DLP to make sure like I'm not sending credit card information or anything like that. Finally, before I close, I want to show you how CI CD still works with all of this. So, like, if I went back to my GitHub repository, and let's say I actually go went went into my uh, features file, this is basically where I define all my WebEx related features. And if I made any changes to my code, almost instantly you would see that it will go ahead and trigger the. So let's see if I can actually show this live. Um, so for create a room, let's see if I can change this live over here and trigger the CI CD pipeline. So I'm going to make a small change to the code. And instead of, or maybe tell me a joke, I'll just say, tell me the joke. Right? I commit this change, not something that I would recommend you do in a production environment. I'm going to just commit this change to my main branch. As soon as I do this commit, you will see that it will go ahead and trigger another build over here. So any changes like on the fly, you can see that it triggers the CICD. And like almost in the next minute or so, this code change will be live. So if I went back to my bot and I said, tell me a joke, it will not respond. I'll have to tell it, tell me the joke. Right? So it just closes that gap between your development and operations team and make sure your code deployment is super fast and super simple. That's my time. Uh, I would like to close with that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll be available right here. Thank you so much for joining.